So today I'm thinking about the uniqueness of the gospel of grace and how it's really not compatible with anything else. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of topics that you can cover that end up putting you in camps with other people that are not like-minded on anything related to Christ himself. For example, Flat Earth. You know, the Flat Earth movement is open to New Agers, to Gnostics, to Torah observers and legalists of all stripes. Now, there's a certain fascination with it, and uh, I'm not a scientist, and I, 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 I entertained some of those videos for a while, and I was just like, wow, you know. And I can see how there's a cosmology that may bring a sense of imminency uh, of, in terms of, you know, physical distance to God, bring him a lot closer, but still that's not as close as the Christ who dwells in my spirit, right? As a regenerated believer, proximity isn't an issue. So, ultimately, that doesn't affect me that much. Now, I can see how if the whole world system is built on this single lie and, and, and that could undo it, but here's the thing. The New Agers are discovering that, too, and other people are discovering that and it really amounts to nothing other than exposing the corruption of the old world order in a more nuanced way, I guess. And what is your answer, though? Because, yeah, we know that the world system is under the god of this world who is, you know, the light bearer. And you can trace that all the way back through how he's intervened in recorded history and set up his priesthoods and his religions and everything. So it's, in a way, it's not a surprise uh, that he could have a whole cosmology that would deceive people, uh, like a falsely called science. And The thing is, though, like I said, what is your answer? Uh... You know, the thing the, Satan uses these exposed truth movements, almost like COINTEL, where he controls the opposition. Because right now we're in a period of time where everything is being exposed. But if you go back and read like the Protocols of Zion and all that stuff, which I read a long time ago, I remember one of the key facets of their plan was to expose all the corruption. First of all, to fill the present world order with deception, lies, deceit, corruption. And then to expose that corruption to produce a backlash, which will result in tearing down the present order so that they can bring in their own. It's the Hegelian, it's the, you know, problem, reaction, solution thing. So, ultimately whose hands is that playing into, you know? Um, if you are a believer that got saved through flat earth or something like that, praise God, but now get to know the Lord Jesus. And like I said, the jury's out on flat earth for me. I, I'm not, I, te I tend to, I think I tend, I'm tending to believe it a little bit, but I don't pay attention to it. Uh, because I just, I, you know, anything they talk about that's spiritual, I've never heard much that's compatible with the gospel of grace by the main pur 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 purveyors of it. Although there are some, you know. There's people who are finding themselves in a sea of legalism while they're engaging that topic and then trying to fight from within that group. And maybe the Lord's called them to do that. I don't know. Uh, but the gospel of grace stands alone and is incompatible with anything else, any other platform. And, uh, 
you can't synchronize it with anything. You can't, you're either for it or against it. Like, there's people who go to these conferences about the Anunnaki and all that stuff, and they have speakers from, you know, from the UFO community that are New Agers and unbelievers stand right up and talk next to a uh, speaker who's a believer in Christ, you know? And they make those kind of concessions and compromises to get that truth out, which is, that's okay. But to me, it's the same thing as, like, reaching out to the Mormons to fight a social cause. You're playing into the world system. All of that is part of the world system. Whether it's truth or error, remember the tree of the knowledge of good and evil from which the world system springs is the knowledge of good and evil. So, just because you're exposing the evil through your knowledge of good or exposing, you know, that doesn't mean that you're not part of building up the world system. The only thing that stands in opposition to the world system is grace, the gospel of grace. And you cannot preach the gospel of grace and stand side by side with a Torah observer. You know, if you were to go one of these con if I were to go to one of these conferences and uh, say, okay, this is all great, but now let's talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ and the grace of God and and this current, you know, how it dis how it's distinguished from everything that went before and how we're not under the law, I'd be kicked out. They're not going to kick the Torah guy out or the New Ager out, but they'll kick the Grace guy out because the Grace produces the sword. It's, it's the sword of the Spirit, you know. It's the sword of the Word that really is the distinguisher. And there is an enmity special between everything that came out of Cain and Abel's line of grace. And Cain produced... Cain represents religious righteousness, yes, by works righteousness, but also building the world system. Music came out of Cain's line. Art, uh, you know, weaponry, knowledge of every kind. They were busy building while the line of Adam through Abel all the way to Noah, other than Noah, doesn't look like they were doing much. They weren't building much. They were beginning. That's what the Bible records is that they were beginning because it was of life out of the promise. And it was just, they were, they were recording God's promise, re remembering and rejoicing in God's promise, and then having children and hoping that each one would be the promised seed, right? That's all they, that's what drove them. That's their business. And that's why there's not a lot about the lives of the people in the line of life before the flood versus we have all kinds of detail about Cain and those guys because they were busy. And so it's the same way today, you know. Um, and I guess this is kind of going with that last message I preached about, or not preached, said about grace. Um, you know, Cain's line is busy building and we are resting. And that's our spiritual gift is to rest in the Lord and let him take care of what he needs to take care of, realizing that we can do nothing but wait on his promise and let him beget things through us. And every time it's a surprise that makes us laugh. Every time a grace believer, a genuine grace person, bears some kind of fruit or has some sort of effectiveness for the Lord, it makes him laugh because we are otherwise barren. We have nothing. And that's God's design. He has chosen the foolish things and the things which are not to, to set it not the things that are, are, that are, right? The foolish things, the weak things, the world despised. He's not interested in wisdom and strength and power. He is interested in bringing those things down through foolishness, and that's us. So praise God that we are foolish and weak. Um, but the gospel... The other thing I was going to say is, you know, the Cain line, they have no actual genuine light, even though they seem to be exposing all kinds of things. Uh, when it comes to their time in the Word, 
they don't bring out the riches of Christ for your enjoyment. They can't. And that's, you know, if they're Cain, they hate their brother. That's what John talks about, right? Cain hates his brother. And because he hates, and the reason he hates is because his brother's righteous blood sacrifice versus his own labor and travail and sweating and toil that he tried to offer to God and was rejected and it infuriates him. So he hates the line of Abel. And John says, you know, don't hate your brother like Cain. And he says, if you do, you're walking in darkness. And so you can't see because the darkness has blinded your eyes and you're stumbling at things and you don't even know what you're stumbling around and you're bumping into things and you're groping and your time in the word you may come out with all kinds of interesting details about this or that which might seem exciting but you won't come out with grace and you know the re and especially when it gets down to you attacking grace believers and all you've got is your legalistic stand. These guys have very little to say. They bring out Matthew 7, and they bring out Matthew 24 and 25, and they bring out James 2, and then they have a smattering of verses from Paul and other places that they can twist to make them into weapons to condemn you. But they never have any light. They never have anything that they can share to edify anyone. There is no nourishing food. There is interesting, arcane, esoteric details about this calendar and that culture and this science fictiony thing and that, this, and the Bible confirms this and the Bible confirms that and the Bible confirms the other. But there's no light from the face of Jesus Christ smiling at you. There's nothing to feed you and to feed your spirit. And it's all very interesting, but it doesn't bring you closer to Christ. And that's where the gospel of grace is unique. Now, when we go to the parables and we go to the gospels and when we go to the epistles and we go, we see new things every time. And that's because we are under the light. And so that light produces words words and language flow from the light of God and we always have a new way to describe the grace we're looking at and we don't fit into anybody's camp when we're looking at the word because we're not borrowing someone else's interpretation or repeating something we heard from somebody else we are getting comforted by the Holy Spirit as we look at the word and the Lord is showing us new things about himself and how his grace is enjoyed and we share out of the comfort that we've received so that because of who we are we become like a unique filter to color the grace so as it shines through us we are seen as well and how we reacted to the grace comes out so the ministry out of a grace person is very unique. It's always unique. Whereas the people in these arcane camps, they're all repeating each other. That's, you know, it's just, it's, rec it's reciting. It's a, it's a recital of someone else's music. And you are repeating this guy and repeating that guy and you read this and you're repeating that and you're repeating this and you're repeating that but there's never a new and you know it's eventually they get they end up quoting more occultists than uh, Bible people it seems like in some cases you know and I'm talking about and I'm ta I've, I've had all years of studying that stuff I can I, I was going into some of that stuff and the Lord kind of said no don't do that because um, when you get into Jezebel and church history and you start seeing how she's related to the mysteries of Nimrod and the Nephilim and all that stuff, of course you want to go there. It's, it's very interesting stuff.
But eventually, I was going to start reading the writings, uh, a quoting from Madame Blavatsky and uh, Alice Bailey and others, and other modern occultists who have infiltrated the churches. What is that going to do? Uh, then, at that point, I'm just reciting. And not only that, but I'm giving you their garbage so that I can expose it and say, look at that. But that doesn't produce any food. So... It's not ministry. The New Testament ministry stands alone, and it's of grace, and it ends up putting you in your own place with the Lord that doesn't seem to be compatible with any other group, and that's why it produces a kind of a loneliness and an isolation, but there's much comfort there, and there's food there, and it's the pasture that he wants to lead his sheep into, and it's the narrow gate is the gospel that leads us to life if you find the life but the life is this pasture this is where the enjoyment is this is really where the spirit just keeps giving you words and light you know especially if you want to comfort people and you'll be surprised because you know more than you think and actually it's not you that knows it it's the spirit bringing to mind all the things that he's shown you over the years I'm amazed at some of the things that I've said since starting all this because I, I'm like, I didn't even remember I knew that or I don't remember, you know, that kind of thing happens constantly whenever I open my mouth in a grace intention, the spirit fills my mouth and I know that's not unique to me, that's for anybody who will set aside some of these other things and I wrote a book about exposing the Antichrist religion of the false prophet and it was full of detail and uh, went on and on and on and I gave it to a few people and I thought it was like earth shaking it said things in there that no one had said you know and it was really just an assembly of all the different things I'd learned and read and picked up but it didn't have this flow and eventually I felt I just took it down and I even told the pastor of my church, I said, yeah, because I'd had him read it. <laughs> but I told him, you know what, I just took that down. I said, I'd rather have the Lord do something new or nothing at all. And it was a month later that this YouTube channel started. I was just done. I was in futility and I documented my experience and seen what I'd seen in the churches and just and produced something sublime in my view, like a work of art. And yet it doesn't feed. It doesn't feed the way the gospel of Jesus Christ and the grace of God does. And so that's where we are, especially since the Lord is coming. He needs to nourish the body of Christ. So I guess this will go under a playlist called, uh, where I collect these videos, where every few weeks I kind of recap and go, what is this channel about? This is what this is about. All right, talk to you later.